Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? All right, guys. Hi. Who's all out there? I know I didn't announce this one. Um, we were actually doing some fun filming, and I said, let's do a Facebook Live because everybody was hungry. Who's hungry? Me. You. <laughs> I thought you said you. <laughs> are you guys hungry at all? Anybody out there? Um, okay. So, yay. Hi, Hannah. So good to see you guys. I hope everybody is well. We are doing everything that we can do. Hi, Debbie. Mwah. Everything we can do to keep spirits up over here and bodies nourished. So today we were doing um, a, some rehearsal. We're going to be on Good Morning America on Monday. I'm so excited about that and so um, happy to bring some good news and some good spirits to the city of New York. Are everybody right now I'm just sending you all kinds of love and we're all sending everybody well wishes and we were getting ready to make some lunch and this is my kitchen I don't know if you guys have all been to my kitchen welcome to my kitchen welcome to my home tonight we're gonna to do a fireside chat by my fireplace and you guys can just kind of ask me questions. I'm your nutritionist, whatever you want to know, whatever you need. If you scroll, um, if you guys scroll those, there we go. Hi, Cindy. Oh, yay. Good to see you, Leilani. Hi. How's the weather out there? Um, anyway, we were talking about what to make, and I said, let's just randomly turn on Facebook and let me make you guys a little bit of asparagus. So, I do a lot of cooking in this kitchen, which is so fun and wonderful and exciting. And we are actually um, here keeping ourselves uh, safe and um, toasty. And hi, Katie. Katie in Florida, Leilani in Colorado. Where are you guys from? Anybody from California? I'm in California right now. I'm getting some thumbs up and some hearts. All right, guys. So. I wanted to make some asparagus for lunch and there was just all kinds of things that sounds really simple and really basic, but all kinds of things that I do in my kitchen that I thought might be a little bit helpful for you. First and foremost, I want you eating healthy food. I want you nourishing your body. I want you doing lots of alkaline vegetables. And so we're going to start today with a little bit of asparagus. Asparagus is very alkalinizing, it's very immune boosting, it's very anti-inflammatory, so check, 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 check. It fits everything. Oh, hi, Arby Snowfire. That's Deborah Morrison and her dog that I'm kind of obsessed with. Um, hi, honey, there's my husband. I miss you. Stay healthy. Get home. <laughs> but, um, so asparagus checks all the boxes of things that I want you guys eating right now. Right guys, we've been doing a lot of vegetables. So there's a couple things with asparagus. I, you guys ask me a lot about how do I wash my vegetables? What do I wash my vegetables in? Elin, did you put this knife over here? Maybe. It's a bit much maybe. maybe. <laughs> but definitely with asparagus, you wanna cut off the woody edges. One thing to think of though, is do not discard this. Do not throw this away. We're gonna use it for arts and crafts later. No, I'm just kidding. What I, what I want you to do is you're gonna cook it, you're gonna puree it, and you're gonna sneak it in the chili next time you make chili. You're gonna sneak it in your vegetable stock. Everything needs to be used right now and always. The fiber right here that makes this real woody is phenomenal for individuals that are dealing with blood sugar issues or cholesterol issues or triglycerides. This is gold. It does not go in your garbage. If you're not making metabolism chili tonight, but maybe you're gonna make it when should we make chili, Grayson? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, let's say maybe she said, in two weeks. That's what I think I heard her say. You can freeze this just how it is, and then you can stick it in your blender or your puree, whatever uh, you use, whatever tool you use. You'll see as we play in my kitchen, I have a lot of them, um, and, and use this. I've also snuck this into uh, gravies, when I've made gravies. Anything that helps that fibrous piece, like that you cut off like in your mushrooms. So we use the part of the asparagus that's a little, not quite so firm, right? We're gonna take this off. And one thing that people ask me a lot is, well, gosh, it's organic. I could just eat it, right? I don't need to wash it because it's organic. 
Actually, you wanna make sure that you're washing your vegetables when they're organic. You should wash all your vegetables. But when they're organic, they're a little more likely to maybe have some little bugs on there, which is okay. You just wanna wash them off. Um, I'm gonna, give me just a second, I'm gonna run over here and I'm gonna grab a big bowl. I don't know if you guys can see me, but you can probably definitely find some sous chefs here. You're gonna grab a big bowl like this. You're gonna plunk your asparagus in there. This is really important if you're using a vegetable, I believe this with all vegetables, but a vegetable that has little teeny crevices, see that in there? Places where bugs or maybe parasites or maybe bacteria could hide, you wanna make sure that you soak your vegetables. So I like to use something that's naturally antimicrobial. I like to use grapefruit seed extract if you guys can see that. You guys might have um, another brand, another fabulous way. Some people use food grade hydrogen peroxide. I like that too. But in a bowl this big, I put about 10 drops of grapefruit seed extract. And then a little trick here. Who has my, hi, Grandma Lonnie. Everybody say hi, Grandma Lonnie. Hi, so, Grandma Lonnie. We miss you and we're glad you're joining us in the kitchen right now. Um, Elon, do we have any water that's purified through a carbon charcoal filter? Uh, like, Brita's one good brand. <laughs> so, a lot of people will use tap water. In this sink right here, I don't have a filter on it. I need to get a filter on it desperately. Um, I really believe that you need to pull all the chlorine out. So what we do when we wash our vegetables is we use a filter like this and we soak all our vegetables like this. Really movement, remember, I've got a chemist here sitting in my kitchen. <laughs> movement helps cover more surface area, right? And the friction can help get rid and dislodge things. So you wanna wash your asparagus really good. I've heard tales. People have told me that they've seen creepy crawlies in the water. Uh, Robert, you got a fishing pole for us? Maybe we could fish something out of here? <laughs> I got an awesome eye roll. That means I did good, right? <laughs> Al Wood is hungry. Good, we're having asparagus. I usually think like, sing your favorite song, play your favorite favorite song on Alexa. A good two minutes is a good amount of time to really let your vegetables soak, right? We'll set these aside for a second. I'm not going to make you watch me soak them. Let me pop this other half. Do you guys um, eat a lot of vegetables right now? I want you getting three to five servings in every day right now. You got to remember, we want to alkalinize our body on the website. On our website, we have the pH testing. It's a great time. Your home. Test your pH. First morning urine. Saliva. I've got the whole list for you there on what to do and how to do it. It's going to take just a second for me to make more water. I'm washing these up. Um, if you're not getting enough vegetables, your body will have a hard time stabilizing your pH. When your pH is stable, it's very hard for things like viruses to really take a hold. They're looking a lot at pH and the body's immune system, pH and inflammation. I'm washing these up, these feel about ready. So asparagus, you can do it the phase three way or the H burn way where you add oil into your pan, or you could do it um, phase two where you use a vegetable broth. Today, I'm gonna do it with phase three or H burn and I'm gonna add oil. Let's see if I can find my oil. Oh, very cute. Who we'll put this here? I just noticed that. Cooking for a fast metabolism. Make sure you guys have that. I'm sure you guys all already have it. Um, we're gonna use grape seed oil. Everybody likes their veggies a little bit differently. I like my vegetables where they're cooked all the way through but still have a little bit of crispness to them. If we were talking in pasta terms, I would say al dente, right? So when you're cooking asparagus, especially because it's got that woodiness, that snap to it, you want to make it a little bit of a higher heat at the end and grapeseed oil is better for a higher heat. 
olive oil is better if you want your vegetables to turn out a little bit softer, a little bit more moist. Grapeseed oil is great if you want your vegetables to be crispier, a little crack to them. So I'm gonna take a pan, be right back. And one thing that I do, which gives me plenty of time when these are kind of soaking. Oh, they just told me don't move quite so much. I get a lot of pixelation. Is I like to start with my onions and my garlic. Anybody want to grab me some garlic? I already have a bunch peeled in the fridge. There's a bunch in the fridge that's peeled. And then smile, you're going to be on camera. <laughs> I think I did a baggie last night. So a lot of times when I'm getting garlic ready, I will peel, you know, several um, bulbs. Thank you so much. Just toss it. There we go. Um, so that it's easy and it's ready, like kind of quickly. The thing about garlic is a lot of people will maybe just throw garlic like this right in the pan. The more you traumatize your herbs and spices, the more flavorful they are. So for example, with garlic, right, I, I leave them in a full bulb like this. I don't typically ever buy minced garlic. You don't get as much punch in your flavor. So what I do is I'll peel a bunch of garlic. <clears throat> hey, everybody. And then I'll come over here and I'll traumatize the garlic, right? I'll squish it. If you have a garlic press, that's great too. I like my garlic a little bit chunkier when I make stuff, especially if I do green beans or asparagus. I'm gonna make sure your blade is face down when you do this, you guys. All of you chefs out there, you can really be wowed by my technique or criticize, whichever you're in the mood for. But you wanna traumatize your garlic, then you can chop it like my meat cleaver. I think it's really cool. I like to cook my garlic and my onions a little bit, I brown those before I put my asparagus in. I think it really vamps up the flavor. Look, I'm gonna stick these in here. How are you guys doing? Hi, Melanie. Where are you guys all from? A lot of times I'll puree these first and freeze them. Just not in the mood today. I'm gonna to freeze them as is. Then when it comes time, ooh, I have a little leftover garlic. I'll throw those in there too. When it comes time, I will just puree those really quick and I'll add them into my chili stock. Again, tons of fiber, tons of vitamin C, really important right now. Um, I like to make food. I make a lot of food. Um, I'm not maybe the prettiest uh, at preparing my food. I like for things to look a little bit, this is what I like to say anyway, a little bit like organic, a little bit earthy. So, you know, sometimes my onions are chopped in all different sizes. And sometimes, you know, especially if I have a friend over that's really into the culinary arts and they're, you know, make beautiful um, food, sometimes they look a little bit prettier. But really it's just about making sure that they're flavorful and that you really kind of, like I said, vamp up that flavor. So I've traumatized my garlic. Don't worry, it's gonna be okay. I have chopped up my red onions. So we use different kinds of onions for different flavors. So when you have the cruciferous vegetables, so the vegetables that have those crisscrosses, things like cauliflower, broccoli, um, cabbage, asparagus, Really, really good uh, is the red onions. They'll actually balance that bitterness a little bit of those vegetables. The yellow onions brings the sweetness out of a vegetable like carrots or yellow uh, peppers or orange peppers. But when you have the cruciferous vegetable, I'm a huge advocate for the red onions. Um, anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I just decided, someone said I'm a food heathen. Ooh, I love it, Susie. I knew, I, I Susie Ryder, I adore you, just FYI. You are such an inspiration to our um, community and our private support group. You really give a lot of people a lot of hope in their health, and so I'm so happy to have you here. So yes, 
me, the food heathen, is just gonna toss my onions in there. And again, I'm making this where it's more um, phase three appropriate. So I'm gonna use grapeseed oil. And I'm gonna just drizzle this over here. I like to get like probably my uh, garlic and my onions about halfway done before I add my asparagus in. So I'm just gonna throw this on the burner really quick. When I cook these, I have a tendency to put it on like medium to medium high heat. And then, hold on just a second, I need a spatula. Where did all of our spatulas go? Okay, in a second, if I do this, I have a feeling what's gonna come my way. Look at that, wasn't that amazing? <laughs> laughing at me. We're doubling down on our health. Grayson's been the CEO of supplements, right? Grayson's been giving us all of our supplements. Yep. Sabrina's been our sous chef. Robert has been saving our lives and moving everything in this house, it feels like. Reorganizing rooms and making sure I'm not being blinded by light right now. Elon's been our tech guru, so as you can tell this week, our tech's getting better and better. Um, but while those are browning, let's just check on our asparagus. Oh my goodness, you guys look beautiful. Again, those of you that might have missed it, I add grapefruit seed extract as a natural food cleanser. And um, hi, Sharon from Colorado. It's a dreamy, semi-snowy day there. Ooh, she made a pot of warrior soup this morning. That is a great idea. So I just wanted to show you, I'm gonna go ahead and drain these. I wonder if I stood here and went like this again, if I would get a strainer by any chance. <laughs> Let me go downstairs and see. Just kidding. There's gotta be one in this house. Perfect. Do you guys ever use a splatter shield? I like those a lot. Um, I it, it doesn't really make your cooking necessarily any better, but it sure makes your cleanup a lot better. So I'm just gonna throw a little splatter guard. One thing is if you are cooking, like right now, I'm doing the traumatized garlic and the red onions. If you're cooking and you just get a little chatty or someone calls you or you get distracted, I learned this fabulous cooking tip. And that's just reach over and turn your burner off for a second. If your onions are getting cooked faster than you want them. If you have a stove that has cast iron or uh, metal top, you might even move your pan over so that things stop cooking. These are just little tips that make me not a very sophisticated um, chefette. Pseudo, in my, when I dream at night, I dream of being a chef, a human being. Still be able to make food that my family loves. So, I'm gonna now take my asparagus. I'm gonna strain out all the water. I can't bring my phone to you guys, but what I can do is I can bring my pan to you. So I'm going to come over here, make sure it's not too hot, and I'm just going to kind of show you. I just have my onions and my garlic browned. And the reason why I like to do this, again, my traumatized garlic, oh my gosh, doesn't it already smell amazing, mm -hmm. is it really is going to vamp up the flavor. Um, hey, mint flight buddy, hey, Joey, yay! Um, it's gonna vamp up the flavor of your asparagus. So I always exposed my kids to tons of vegetables. I always wanted them to eat really healthy food. And then when my husband and I got married, my husband was like, ah, you know, I'm just not a really big vegetable eater. It's just kind of not my thing. And I know you're a nutritionist and I know you advocate for that, right, honey? Um, but it's just kind of not my thing. And I started making him vegetables and they were super flavorful, if I do say so myself. And in that process, he's really not only come to fall in love with vegetables, but he's really, really um, making very good vegetables when he prepares a meal. When you do the grapefruit seed extract, you can go ahead and rinse your vegetables if you want. You don't necessarily need to. A lot of people take grapefruit seed extract orally. Um, 
when we have people that are traveling and don't, you know, are prone, this would be a great time right now. If you're not using bottled water or purified water and you're gonna brush your teeth, uh, really good to put a little grapefruit seed extract on your toothbrush. We have people that use it. Um, if they have like flaky scalp, they can put it in their, gosh, who knew this was so useful? We use it a lot. Um, so I'm gonna put these in here. I'm gonna go ahead and set them in there. And then one of the tricks for me, or it's a trick, or it makes my asparagus okay, is I cook it about halfway with the top on at about a medium heat, and then I crank up the heat and take the top off. I don't like to burn them, but I do like to brown them just a little bit. And that is the trick to doing that. So we are cooking with what we have. You'll notice that this lid is a little bit smaller than that ginormous pan that I have but that's okay, I'm gonna set it right on top. If you don't have a um, lid for a pan, like maybe right now you're cooking a whole bunch of food, and you're making, like us, we just did two big things of asparagus, you can always put aluminum foil over the top. Or um, if, like there's those really cool, um, I wanna get one. They're like a, a lid that, um, oh, hi Sarah. These live events, yay, Sarah, we did some live events. We were actually all went on a cruise together, a lot of us. We did a lot of cooking. It was hilarious. I burnt stuff, we caught some stuff. Well, we made stuff smoke a whole lot. Um, the oven kept turning off, the seas got really rocky, and the stoves kept turning off, but it was a blast. We had a blast cooking together. Um, grapefruit seed extract, you know, I, I don't, I'm cautious about ordering anything in the uh, natural foods or supplement world off of um, uh, Amazon, but what I do do is I will go into the health food store or if they have their own web page on Amazon. There's a lot of knockoffs right now, and especially in anything that you're ingesting, it's really, really important that you're very careful about that. So health food stores, Whole Foods, uh, Vitamin Cottage, Natural Grocers, you know, we travel with this. This is in our camping kit. Um, who knew? So uh, anyway, this is cooking. I'm wondering if we can get some plates maybe so we can plate this for us. That would be awesome. Gosh, what would I do if you guys weren't here? So give me a thumbs up. Does everybody have, um, they're cooking for a fast metabolism book order. We are going to start doing a challenge together the end of April. It will be based on recipes for this book. You get entry into the challenge for free when you purchase the book. And um, Haley's Holdings available on Amazon. I'm gonna do something really quick and show you what I'm gonna do to my asparagus. Can I get a set of tongs? So one thing, and this is the big, great veggie debate in our house. So I have a tendency, I like to fold my vegetables and not stir them. I don't like to traumatize my vegetables. Remember, when you traumatize something like garlic, it makes it more flavorful, but when you traumatize something like um, green beans or um, asparagus or cabbage, it starts to break that vegetable down and you risk having soggy veggies at the end. So I will either use tongs or I'll use a spatula and I will just gently fold my vegetables. So let me show you really quick. When you stir them, you make them mushy. And I have an issue with mushy vegetables. Um, okay. So these are my little tongs. But basically, I'm just gonna pick them up like this, and I'm gonna turn them over. And I'm gonna pick them up like this, and I'm gonna turn them over. So I feel like one of the mistakes that a lot of people, and I work with a lot of chefs. We staff a lot of chefs in houses, and I've, I've, I've both learned a lot of tricks, and I've also learned um, to share a lot of tricks that I've learned. I don't like, again, I don't like green beans that are smushy. I don't like uh, asparagus that's smushy. I can't stand Brussels sprouts that are smushy. So fold your vegetables. You can use a spatula if you don't have these tongs. These tongs are the bomb. Um, I don't know where I got them. It's through the top or William Sonoma or Bed Bath & Beyond. I, I'm always buying cooking stuff. But these are great with asparagus. These don't work quite as well with cabbage. So with cabbage, you might want to use a spatula. But I'm just going to flip those a good time. I'm also getting a little bit of that grapeseed oil, a little bit of that grapeseed oil. 
Hi, Linda. Are you in Texas? I think Linda's in Texas, right? Welcome, horns. I probably just completely butchered it. Good to see you. Hi. Okay, I'm gonna cover that up just for a second more. This just, when you cover it, it just lets that steam kind of bathe. So, so uh, as we know, heat and moisture rises. And remember that moisture is now grape. Uh, grape seed extract is, is what we use to clean. The moisture is now grape seed oil, different than grapefruit seed extract. We've got red onions. I've got traumatized garlic. I've folded my asparagus. Um, hi, Linda. Okay, so I'm gonna, in just a second, I'm gonna crank up the heat. Anybody have any questions so far? Anybody um, really wowed with my abilities in the kitchen yet? Anybody notice that maybe we're all a little stir crazy? Um, you know what I want to make next time? Are you guys making garbanzo bean snacks? So let's do that next time. That has been a real lifesaver as I'm sitting at my home office and feeling the kind of urge to snack. I'm making my own uh, flavored chickpeas. Really good. We're going to get ready to make some homemade jerky. We want to do that. Um, last not last call, but while I'm finishing this up a little bit, does anybody have any questions? All right. Eland. Eland had a great question. What was that, Eland? <laughs> Earlier he asked me about when I created this cookbook, did I have any idea what was going to be going on? Oh, I told you. Um, yeah. <laughs> he was like, you know, when you started making the cookbook, did you ever think we'd all be locked in a house uh, for weeks on end and everybody would be locked in their homes or people that weren't able to be? I feel like it's kind of a privilege actually for myself um, being able to be locked in my home and not having to go out and um, be in the front lines right now. I'm so grateful to those of you that are out there, whether it's you know um, somebody that's at Trader Joe's or someone that's in the hospital taking care of people. I'm just so grateful for all of you, your bravery and your courage, and um, anything we can do to help, let us know. So, that was a great question, Eland. Did I have an idea? No, I didn't have an idea. Um, but I think I'm, and, and it's weird because we're filming Good Morning America from my kitchen, we're filming KTLA from my kitchen. I'm so grateful to have those opportunities. But we just canceled 14 flights. We were supposed to be in New York City uh, launching the book. It launches officially uh, next week. And I just really had no idea. I thought we'd be you know, hitting the road, doing a book tour, cooking all across America. And that's why today I decided to kind of turn my camera on and um, cook across America with you guys. So this cookbook, uh, Heidi, that's a great question. Heidi just asked, um, what, why is this cookbook different than the fast metabolism diet? So this cookbook is chock full of recipes. There's over 100 recipes in there. Um, I taught you how to make homemade cheese, homemade, I better check my stuff, check my goods, homemade um, um, ranch dressing, homemade barbecue sauce, homemade broths. It's got all my kitchen hacks. It also has over 100 recipes that are just whole food based, amazing recipes, but with a cheat sheet to show you how to morph those into face specific foods. So uh, they're all new recipes, which is good. I'm gonna flip these one more time. And now they're getting a little soft and let me show you how I know. So when it's time for me to crank up my asparagus, Let me see if I can show you one. Your asparagus starts to get wobbly, right? When you first start, it's real stiff. It's real crisp. When it starts to get wobbly, about a good 50% of the asparagus in your pan starts to get wobbly or softer. Let's see if it's, yeah, there you go. You can bend it without it snapping. That's when it's time to crank up your heat, watch it. <laughs> Still a little undercooked, but definitely time to crank up the heat and start browning it a little bit. So now, oh, that's good though. 
I always tell you guys at the very end, that's when you put your spices in, right? So, especially when you're investing in a high quality salt, you wanna make sure that you get all of the nutrients in that salt. So with a high quality salt, you've got zinc, you've got copper, you've got selenium in it. You wanna add that at the very end so that it doesn't all just burn off when you're cooking. So I'm gonna dig in my spice rack. I don't know if you guys have seen my spice rack. But I'm gonna, this is, I don't know if you can see it, but I have this spice rack that you pull out. This was like what we did on the cruise. We said, imagine if you could see. And I'm just gonna grab some granular salt. Um, one of my favorite, there's a couple things that I love. Celtic salt, I've shown you guys this before. Can you guys see this? Celtic salt is a brand, uh, a company that makes a ton of different herbs and spices. They're, this is their uh, toasted sesame with garlic. It's phenomenal. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of that on. And then I like Simply Organic grind to a salt. If you can see in there, it's got a lot of herbs and spices and a really high quality salt. So I'm gonna put both of these in my asparagus. Again, we do this towards the very end so we don't, you know, we're investing in in expensive herbs and spices. You know, when you're looking at buying things that are organic, when you're looking at buying things that have not been stripped of all of its nutrients, you don't want to take what you've invested in and have it dissipate up through the heat, the vent, right? So I'm just going to do this. And this uh, sesame with garlic is phenomenal. They also have, I mean, they got a bunch of stuff. Um, and I would say everybody in my house, <laughs> we use, we put grind with salt in our stocking stuffers. And we uh, missed it a couple times with some friends and family members. And I don't work for grind with salt at this point. They don't send me any. Um, we buy them by the case and uh, just really enjoy giving that out. So I'm gonna flip it one more time and we're gonna have lunch. So. Who wants to have lunch with me? Who wants, yeah. <laughs> These guys are like, don't, don't give it out. <laughs> this is for me. Um, tonight, we're gonna do a fireside chat. So on the website, HaleyPomeroy.com, I have been doing a lot of videos talking about the science uh, behind your body and inflammation, the science behind the metabolism, how pH can affect um, your viral load or viral exposure, how inflammation can inhibit your body from having in it strong immune response. Those videos have been very scientific. They've been very heavy. And so today I just wanted to kind of have a little bit of fun in the kitchen. And then tonight I was thinking you could grab a cup of tea, I could grab a cup of tea, and we could just kind of snuggle up together here on Facebook in front of my fire. It's gonna be at five o'clock Pacific time. My daughter's telling me don't mess up my asparagus. Hi, hi, Captain. I'm going to fold these one last time and we are going to have an amazing lunch. Oh my gosh, those are looking so good. So, if you felt like it was fun cooking and you want me to do this more, please let me know. Um, if you have any thumbs up, hearts, share this with your friends and family members. Today I just really was hoping to kind of um, empower you to feel comfortable in your kitchen. I wanted you to feel like you could do this. I wanted you to know that I want you eating your veggies and I'm not kidding about that. It is critical right now that we really, really take care of ourselves. You are all so special to me. You're important to me. I love cooking with you. I look forward to making a lot more delicious food together and uh, we got to go eat. So, all right. Mwah. See you guys in front of the fire, five o'clock tonight, Facebook.